Hello, everybody. On today's episode, I have on a guest who has been digging deep into conspiracies. He has started his own podcast with his co-host that may join us at some point in February and have been covering some really great topics. Everybody welcome Jeff from the Shadow Band Podcast. You got a clap track and everything for me? I got the clap track and everything. You guys are fancy, man. We like to make everyone feel special. Like right, that was it. the goal of the podcast. I, I wanted to make everyone feel like they're, they're as special as I feel that I am. So, you know, that well, you I give the applause to my audience. Uh, you did a good uh, job, man. That was excellent. Awesome. I'm glad that it, it worked. Uh, so how are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, man. I, I really appreciate you hitting me up to come on the show. Um, I've been listening to a few guys' episodes in the last few days, trying to learn who you guys are a little bit and all that. But I'm doing really good, man. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing excellent. Yeah. yeah, I was listening to a few of your episodes as well. You guys got a good uh, rapport with each other. Uh, so, you know, it, it's there's a lot of people that make a lot of the same type of material nowadays. You know, a lot of people have podcasts. So it's nice to have a different angle about it you know you want to be entertaining you want to be different than other shows so i like the uh, the rapport that you guys got going on in your show cool yeah i appreciate that i try to crack some jokes man i've always been the class clown i guess and kind of a black sheep as well so i kind of just mix the conspiracies with you know jokes and you name it man just try to have fun with it because it's a lot of dark stuff we talk about so mm -hmm. you can either laugh or cry you know what i mean yeah, you guys cover some dangerous topics too. You know, oh, the yeah. Las Vegas shooting. You know, I'm I'm not ready to cover that. <laughs> That's a good one too, man. That's a good it one. It is. It is a good one. It's the largest shooting ever in American history, right? Uh, and uh, we, no one even talks about it. It was what four years ago. The mm -hmm. anniversary just passed, and no one talks about it. Yep, memory hold, just like most things these days. Yeah, because anyone that thinks about it uh, just a little bit, they're like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's kind of like the the Alex Jones conundrum, right? Like it, once he got kicked off for talking about Sandy Hook and all that, like you can't talk about those kinds of things because everybody's just worried about getting banned, <clears throat> excuse me, or getting censored. And right. honestly, man, I mean, look at the name of the show, right? Shadow Band Podcast. It's kind of a badge of honor for me. We got double TikTok banned. You know, they, they banned my account the first time, then they banned it the second time, and now I can't even watch TikTok on my phone, and I took that oh, as like wow. a badge of honor. So bring it on, you know what I mean? Yeah, I haven't even opened TikTok. I'm like, I have too many uh, things already, so I, I don't need, <laughs> it's need another one. probably a blessing to have TikTok be gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, there's too many apps, like you said, so one less whatever, you know? Right, I, I got banned from Facebook and from Twitter once already each and then I, I gave them up as soon as they took it from me. I was like, all right, I just won't play. And I, and I was off social media completely until I made this podcast. I was like, oh, well, I got to make the social media for the podcast. Got to reach the people. So made the new ones. And, you know, I just I don't typically say anything about politics any longer because I don't care about politics. You know, it, that was part of the reason why I got kicked off of Twitter was i was posting about trump and all that so so i don't even touch that and i just i say things that are just so crazy out there that they're like oh no one will believe him no matter what he says so yeah that's kind of how i am man i I say like the lizard people a lot i you know i, I kind of do believe that stuff to be honest with you but you know people just think it's oh he's just a crazy conspiracy they, you know he doesn't know what he's talking about but the people right. who listen and they message me all the time they say hey man i heard you say this thing kind of in passing and a joke on your show and i went and looked it up and holy crap man it was real and i'm like look man that's what it's all about do your own research you know don't just take my word for it you know i'm gonna give you some of my information and run with it you know what i mean yeah well the shit's so crazy that yeah you, you know it's kind of joking when you talk about it you know anyway because it's like oh yeah there's lizard people running the government it's like is there there might there's a good chance actually in my research that that there is some kind of reptilian being that can shape shift in a not in a physical sense but their consciousness can shift and take form you know, like switch out and kind of clone uh, mimic something and mm -hmm. 
And when you look at all the different pictures of people, you know, like you look at pictures of Biden from 2008 versus now, it's not that he aged, it's a completely different person. And it's yeah. with it's like that with everybody. I mean, even Trump a few weeks ago, there was a picture of some guy who was like 30 years younger and like two feet shorter uh, and his hair was all messed up. And it's like, th that's not Donald Trump. Like, what are you guys doing? And, and Biden having the picture with the hobbits, uh, Carters, you know, the like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what is going on? It's so fake anymore. I just, you know, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. I mean, you ever uh, get into like David Icke's talks? No, I, I never like listened that? to David Icke. Oh, man, you would love him. Uh, but, you know, something he talks about a lot, and I've kind of melded this into my own little theory, a little, but it's, it's mostly based off of him. But, you know, these um, <clears throat> these interdimensional beings, right, demons or whatever you want to label them as, it's almost as if they have a way to hijack the light spectrum that, you know, our eyes absorb, that our brains decode, right? Because, you know, we're only perceiving a small spectrum of the, of the full light. And it's almost as if they're hacking that that specific frequency so you're right i don't think that they're physically shape-shifting they're just you know uh making us perceive them as what they want us to perceive them as while the in in the real reality the physical uh 3d world they might actually be a lizard person standing there for all we know you know what i mean yeah yeah you know it, it's very weird but i think the movie they live you know that was kind of it was eye-opening. I mean, I knew all the stuff already, but seeing it in that way, it gave me a whole new perspective. Like, man, is something maybe going to happen that's going to, they're going to not be able to hide any longer and we'll just see them as they are? You know, that would be, that would be something. It would be wild, man. I can't really re imagine how people would react if the Simpsons episode came true and they just pulled the masks off, you know, like. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it would be wild for sure. Yeah, well, you know, anything's possible at this stage in the game. There's so, and the weirdest part is the the fakery of the White House sets that are are being passed around so openly now. Uh, it's just like, are they setting up? You know, are they? Why are they getting so close? Why are they allowing us to see all this? Is what's it setting up for? And you know, it, when I get in meditations and I'm I'm getting information like, oh, nobody's at that place of government or, you know, or whatever. No one's actually there. And then that's on the news. I'm like, you know, where is everybody? And, mm. you know, it's just a, it's a very weird time right now. Well, I mean, it's it's the apocalypse. And if you know the word apocalypse means the unveiling or the lifting of the veil. So right. I think that the. I think that the whole mass consciousness, you know, the great awakening idea, I think enough people are waking up and raising their vibrations, you know, every single day that these beings aren't able to hack our perception of, of vibration that well anymore. So I think that they have to slowly kind of trot out the fake sets and the green screen Biden videos and all that kind of stuff just to, you know, lessen the blow or lessen the trauma when that day comes that the, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I, and I'm every day I'm meditating. I'm seeing all these different things. I'm trying to do my own part and you know help them uh, wake up everybody. Do do this unmasking, unveiling that uh, you're talking about. So it's nice to see. Oh, that sounds better. Oh, that sounds a lot better. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's nice to see. See that my other mic. I'm used to talking into the side of it. Now this one, I guess, is in the top. So it is nice to see that uh, so many people are waking up. And the other day, and this is something that I definitely want to get into with the, the electric universe. The other day, I so I've been drinking zeolite lately. Zeolite powder, I've been putting that in my water, drinking that, and it's taking out so many metal toxins out of me. Mm -hmm. And it, it's amazing. So what I was doing uh, the other day, I was meditating. And I could see that the, the, there is a an electrical grid all around our bodies, you know, all over. And what they did was they took it from concentric rings, you know, rings and rings, and they made it a uh, the the star, the uh, what's it tetrahedron? called? Tetrahedron. No, 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 not the tetrahedron. The uh, pentagram. Oh, okay. so, 
So the satellites are shooting lasers to each other that are holding this pentagram in place to try to pull something into it. And then like I put up these mirrors that would shoot the lasers directly back at the satellites. I don't, I don't know if that was actually real or anything, you know, but it was. You saw this in a meditation, you said? Oh yeah, I do crazy shit in my meditations. I, I affect my, the physical world around me and you know, I, last night I, I helped uh, Mimi release her Kundalini that was amazing that's wild see i don't I, like i've tried to med well, i say i tried but i'm super impatient so it's hard for me to say that i'm putting a lot of effort into it but like <laughs> i just i don't know man my mind bounces around it's so hard for me to like just sit down and like try to do that i mean without some sort of like outside help with psychedelics or something like that i don't think i've ever experienced anything like that you know what i mean by myself well, I'll give you a good tip to start is if you're going to do it, what you want to do is you want to pull all the energy to your center. Like, so when you take a deep breath, you breathe in through the nose and then you want to swallow the breath see most people just like let it go in the chest or the throat, but you want to swallow it as if you're swallowing water. And then from there, you get to use the energy of that. You can put that energy in each of your chakra points, or as I'm about to tell you, you can put it in a sense that you're centering your body. Like you have two versions of yourself and you're bringing them together right in the center. And then when you exhale, like you hold that there for maybe seven seconds, four to seven seconds, hold it there. And then when you exhale, exhale really hard out of your mouth and push out of the top of your head as if it's an angry cartoon character pushing steam out. And also try to push the energy that's around your body, try to push it away from you. So like you stayed mm. centers. So you can do it in multiple steps. You know, it's a learning process to, to be able to do all of that. But when you start to center yourself, then you can push off all that static electricity that's, a, that's not allowing you to be still and be silent and get your brain uh, under your full operation. Because there's so many different uh, chemicals and metals and just energy frequencies that like if we listen to certain music if we see certain visual things on our tvs or computers no matter what it is no matter how brief it may be it changes our vibrational pattern our electrical output so then it changes our you know we become a little static so if we don't clear that off then it's really tough to you know to finally do it but you know, I went from a, a drug addict in prison a few years ago, and now I'm able to do all this crazy stuff with meditation. So it's possible to completely change. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Honestly, um, I do a lot of the, I don't even know what you'd call them, like the other, like I do breathing techniques sometimes, you know, if I feel like I'm getting anxious or something like that, I'll like go lay down and, and just focus on breathing. I guess that's kind of a form of meditation. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, that's exactly what I do. You focus right. on your breathing and listen to whatever's in your environment, clears your mm -hmm. brain right away. Yeah, it definitely helps. And then I also do, um, I, I strongly believe in the, the frequency of music thing, you know, the 432 Hertz situation. Mm -hmm. I, I look for bands, I listen to metal. I'm a big metal head. So okay. I look for bands that record in 432 hertz and then there's also like an app that you can use to put other 440 songs mm. into and it'll oh well transition it to 432 i don't know how good that's actually transitioning that but you know and then i do all the kinds of well i say all the kind i mean i vape so i have my vices but i try to eat relatively healthy and i'm taking like um all natural type supplements and things like that to try to like like you said clean your body out or put things in it that are better than like mcdonald's you know what i mean yeah yeah for so. sure well it sounds like you know you're on you're on the right path to, to getting clearing yourself out the way that, that you're looking to do it so have you ever uh, heard of zeolite or tried it i've heard the term but i've never tried it i'm not even really sure what it is i know it's uh, like you said you mix it in your water and stuff but that's all yeah so it's a powder and it so you can look it up and it, it tells you that it basically the metals in your body bind to it. So it's like moving through your body, you know, so say I take a drink and it starts, excuse me, it starts moving through my body. It's going to collect the metal that comes, you know, that it comes in contact with or comes near. And it's going to act as a filter and push it out of you when you go to the bathroom or sweat or whatever. 
and it's crazy i see different times in my meditations i see metals coming out of my third eye well this was a few weeks ago i saw all these shards of metal just coming out of my third eye and i've even seen shards of metal coming out of my daughter's armpit uh that because our deodorants well a lot of female deodorants have aluminum in them mm-hmm. so you know once that happened i was like whoa she needs new deodorant <laughs> yeah that's crazy um my co-host says that he drinks pure cranberry juice like not from concentrate or anything but apparently what he drinks he drink like a little two ounces a day and he says it tastes like poison but i, I what he says is it does pretty much the same thing it kind of replaces these receptors you know in your brain and all these other places um with the heavy metals and replaces it with like whatever the good type of iodine is i don't really know off the top of my head oh wow i had never heard of that one but i'm sure it is probably super bitter yeah he says it tastes like straight poison so that's why i haven't done it yet because i'm not a fan of drinking poison but you know does he make his own or how does he get the straight no cranberry? I, forget, I can't think of the oh, brand he talks about it kind of a lot in our show um oh, okay he just i know that it's not from concentrate that's like the only thing that i can remember <laughs> that's why i like that cranberry hibiscus plant that that lady gave me some of the leaves you can just chew them up and you know yeah she, yeah, she threw a leaf at me the other day she goes here i got <laughs> like, this try from, this yeah, i got this it looks from like the, a uh, dark purple market. like weed leaf that's what it looks like yeah, yeah. But it's called cranberry hibiscus and it tastes a little bit sour like a lime a little bit but it tastes like a cranberry too i didn't get to eat it she ate it because i was like i'm not hungry at the I moment. ate the whole pile you can make a tea out of that <laughs> yes you can or mm. you can just eat it or put it in salad or whatever yeah it, it does it looks like one of those salad leaves that uh you know one of those purple ones that you might get uh, sometimes i don't even know it just looks like a dark purple weed leaf it's like a five leaf plant I'll have to check that out for sure. I eat a lot of salad. I want to. So. I want to get a plant because it was it was good to me. I want to grow some of that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another supplement I've been taking lately. I started about ten days ago. Well, it was about eight days ago, I guess, because it's a ten day supply. Is a uh, Paracel, which it takes out your parasites. Hmm. Uh, so I don't want to say the word because what Joe Rogan took. I'll say that you know. Uh, so I'm listening <laughs> to. <laughs> another podcast from over a year ago when uh this uh virus was still fairly new and this guy's saying well it's mimicking all these different uh symptoms of parasites and he goes i he's like i'm looking at the results of all these different uh things that people are taking and he mentions that thing and i was like huh well you know let me look into like parasites and and apparently like almost every country in the world except for america uh takes parasite removers every year because we gain parasites in us from just interacting with everyday life it just happens Mm. and once i took it it was like boom a flush and i feel so much better because uh like what really got me was he he was talking about how there were certain times he would eat something maybe like a sugar substance or something and then all of a sudden he and he wasn't really hungry but then after he ate that then it's like oh i want more and he was like then i kept stuff in my face with it and he's like and that wasn't me and i knew that so then i looked into this and turns out it was a parasite and then i did the same thing the first two days it was like oh well like okay you know i definitely had something in me and i had no idea and now it ain't in there yeah that's something i've heard a lot and that's one of the things that i've never actually like pursued fixing in my body is is the whole parasitic situation i mean like i said i'm taking a bunch of different uh vitamins and supplements magnesium beets you know all all the standard calcium and vitamin b's and all that but yeah i I haven't really got into like cleansing so much you know what i mean but i i every time that somebody tells me this i'm always like i gotta do that and then i just (laughs) never do it you know what i mean i procrastinate about things until the last minute it's just like how i work (laughs) yeah i just ordered it off amazon it was like a 10-day supply i was like all right i'll try it and i recommend everybody you know clear out the parasites because it's just wormwood uh garlic and clove are the only Hmm. three things in it and i've so i take vitamin d every day and there was a bunch of I was taking Genius Brand mushroom pills for a while in order to help my brain, you know, synapses fire in a different way. 
so I've taken different things at different times, but this stuff, it, it really, you know, these two things I'm on now, Zeolite and Paracel, they're really clearing me out and I feel so much more clarity, so much more refreshed and I feel more in control of, of myself. I actually quit coffee uh, today. So, well, again, again, <laughs> <laughs> quit, right? <laughs> well, I'm going to make it hard for you. I'm going to sip on mine a little bit and just test your willpower. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, actually, all right. So I quit my morning coffee, which I was, I, I did have to drink one in the afternoon. I'm a truck driver and I only got four hours of sleep last night. So it was like mid afternoon and I had two deliveries left and I was like, man, I need coffee. So you do uh, local driving, uh, semi-local. So I like today I went two hours away. Sometimes I go up to like four hours away. But I used to be an over-the-road truck driver. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah? Yep. Used to drive oh. for Werner. Used to, I was a wiener driver. Oh, how about that? I was Trans Am. Hey, there it is. Yeah. There it is. Get the old trucker wave. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I still... Were... Uh, quick question. Can you guys hear that fan? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. I mean, it's no biggie. I just put it on this thing here, and you won't hear it probably. How's that? Is that better? Yeah, I don't hear it. Okay, because yeah, I live in an RV, it. so when the AC kicks on, it's super loud. So I shut it off oh, yeah? when I'm doing these shows. Yeah. Oh, how do you like that? Living in the uh, RV. It's nice. It's nice, man. I'm out here in the woods. Um, okay. I mean, my mom has a bunch of property, so we got it hooked up to all the water and all that stuff. So it's not like super off grid or anything, but I'm out here far away from the people. So it feels good. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we have not too many neighbors. I'm right in Georgia. So. You know, we're right in the woods too. We're at the end of a street and our little community, it's one way in, one way out. So, you know, I'm not, we're not near too many people. Uh, and, you know, th there's a lot of people who live in trailers around here. I actually want to get an RV so that I can move around and see the country, you know, because I've been visiting like, uh, what was it, uh, last weekend or two weekends ago, I went to St. Augustine. And, you know, I just, I want to do all this exploring. I went to the Georgia Guidestones this past summer. Like, I want to see what's out there and I want to go to these sites. You know, they're very, there's a feel to it when, especially when you're looking at the old structures and, and seeing it in a whole new light, there's a certain feel to it and it's awesome. Yeah, St. Augustine is awesome. I'm a maybe two hour drive. I'm down in Orlando, so I'm not too far from there and, yeah, man, when you see some of that architecture that they were building back in the day and then you come back to normal civilization and, yeah, and you uh, <laughs> see, like, these square boxes that we're living in, it's just like, what happened, man? Like, at what point did we just lose all <clears throat> artistic, architectural abilities, man? It's, it's wild. It's wild. Yeah, yeah, This my background is, this is a picture I took. This is the Presbyterian Church in St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. We went on a helicopter ride and... I got pictures of it from, you know, all the stuff from the air, from the, uh, and from the street. So, you know, it was really cool. I, I never been in a helicopter before and looking at everything. And it actually opened my eyes to how the waterways that are, nobody lives on now, but I think they were probably lived on before there was too much water, but there's, they're all S shaped. And it's like, everybody would have lived right on top of these rivers and now, you know, there's nothing there except for the the different weeds that grow and, and grasses that grow high. But you can still see the general shape, and it's like, man, that was man made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when and you're right about when you go to some of these places, you you can really feel an energy in these places. You know, and I I truly believe that there's some uh, validity to like the ley line mm -hmm. concept. You get you familiar with ley lines and all that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in geomancy, like the, these people back then weren't just building beautiful architecture. They were putting it on very specific locations to like right. enhance or amplify that energy. And a lot of it has to do with like groundwater, or aquifers, you know, water under the ground. So it's it's deep stuff, man, for sure. I want to go up and see the uh, Serpent Mound. Oh, it was Ser Serpent it, Mound. Well, which one? Isn't in Ohio? Yeah, in Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that would be really cool. I wonder, you know, I wonder exactly what that means when they say serpents and when America's the land of the giants, you know, the Americas are the land of the giants. I wonder exactly what that means because I know that they're probably the Nephilim, they're, they're offspring of the Seraphim, 
in some sense. But I had Gary Wayne on uh, the roundtable the other day, and he was saying there were many different races in Nephilim that, you know, we just know, we just use the term Nephilim to cover all of these different races. But he's like, there's lion beings that had offspring. There's uh, serpent beings that had offspring. There's uh, uh, bull or cattle beings that had offspring. You know, it's all this different stuff, and it's like, Man, uh, you know, I I wonder what that all is, and I know Quetzalcoatl. He was definitely uh, a big part of that. He was, I think, the leader of the Serpent Brothers, and, and that, and he has like all the same characteristics of Jesus, except he's part serpent instead of part God. You know, so he's like, I don't know. It, it's weird, but I I've been thinking a lot lately that. Uh, Q was probably has something to do with Quetzalcoatl and hmm. the great deception. Uh, he was the fake Jesus and Q is now the fake savior. So, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand. Symbolic. Yeah. And they, they have dug up, um, in a lot of those, um, like native American mounds and stuff. They've dug up giants, like legitimate. Uh, yeah. One of my episodes, we went through a bunch of old documents and stuff where I was you know, just listening were... to that. Yeah, they were saying there's like 14 foot here, a 12 footer over there, and I'm just like, dude, this is crazy. And that, and this was before. I mean, a lot of the articles I was reading in that episode were like from the late 1800s, early 1900s, right. you know. And if you go look for them now, they're gone. I mean, you could find obviously because I found them, but you know, yeah. There's a guy. There's a guy who documented all of them, and there's over 10 tales in across America from mm -hmm. the 18, from, I think from 1800 to the early 1900s. That mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying, and I mean, yeah, you go over a bunch of them in your uh, podcast, and you know, I think that I I just don't know. I'm very open and doing all this um, research into Tartaria and and the world's fairs, which I'm I barely scratch the surface on the world's fairs. It's I mean, that's so much to it, but I I think that the Greek gods, quote unquote, Greek gods were living in the Americas. And, mm -hmm. and that's why we have all these structures, all the, uh, the Colosseum or the columns. And we have, you know, like the Chicago world's fair was exactly 400 years after Columbus, uh, discovered America. And it has a statue of Columbia. We have the district of Columbia is our headquarters. You know, it, it's all crazy. And what you were saying with the ley line. So when I was going up and back and forth between Philly, so I'm from Philly and I moved here last year during the pandemic in Georgia. And I was going back and forth, taking my daughter up for the summer and bringing her back down. And on my way, I stopped at a special ley line location, which I'm not going to mention on air, but I, uh, I buried some organite in different places. And, uh, you know, there was just some wacky, uh, rainy weather that started occurring right after uh, I started trying to help fix the the ley lines, and it it was at the you know I I, I don't want to say too much, so. <laughs> but if you treasure, Wait, X marks the spot, yeah. man. Where's the treasure at? We're gonna send some some geo hunters over there and find some rocks, bro. <laughs> well, well, I'll say this: if you look into Virginia. They have some very odd things going on in Virginia. And there is there's a Route 666 that is in between Route 10. So Route 10 goes and then it splits. And you have Business 10 and you have, uh, you know, whatever, the Highway 10. So it splits and in between is Route 666. And that's the only place it is, this, is this little area. And there's there's only two things on the street. Now it's about a mile long, but there's only two things. One is a cemetery that is on one side and the other side. And literally next door to that is a Smithfield uh, plant, uh, meat packing plant. So hmm. after I saw that, I was like, I will never eat pork again. Yeah, dude, like... I've gotten into like the corporations thing a lot. And it's, it's so interesting to me that like, if you look at all the fortune 500 companies and stuff like that, and, and some of them are like these big meat packing companies and things, mm -hmm. they seem to always start their corporations in the springtime. It's like they're following the astro theology, uh, 
situation you know what i mean and they're they're using the sky clock as like okay we got to start this thing now and then it becomes this giant conglomerate i just had uh micah dank on i saw that you had you've had micah dank on as well yeah. and dude that guy man he i mean i've listened to him a thousand times but when you sit down and talk to the man and you watch his presentation I, like i was just i didn't talk for like the whole episode pretty much because he was just blowing my freaking mind with all that you know yeah, I've I've heard it plenty of times, so it wasn't anything new. I mean, it was amazing and great, but I kind of think that, uh, well, I mean, it's as above, so below. So you know, everything he's saying is literal. So it it is playing out in the stars because that's just on a more grand scale. But it it is playing down out down here, and it is pretty amazing that it works out that way. Uh, but you know, it, it's very. When, when I think about it, it could be that humans created it to be that way. You know, like there was just a bunch of stars in the sky and they said, oh, this one is this. And they made constellations and told us, put it in the collective consciousness and then started telling us the stories through the stars rather than it coming actually from the stars. It probably came as literal events and then people were translating it to the stars. Or maybe it was just both happening at once. You know, but it is very freaky on how accurate it is with uh, with describing things. Yeah, that's the part that gets me because I'm on the same kind of train of thought as you. I, I like to look at both sides of all these these things, right? So mm -hmm. I had that thought for a long time. Look, maybe there was just things that were happening, and then ancient people came up with these stories. But the thing that got me was like eclipses. Like, what are the odds that? this object and this object are way different sizes and so different you know the distances and 400 just, times further 400 times yeah, uh, and they bigger. perfectly like perfect like dude getting into all this kind of stuff like i used to be not spiritual not religious in in any fashion and now i'm a 100 percent I know that we live in, a, in, a, in an intelligently designed creation and it's not an accident. Like we weren't just farted out of the big bang <laughs> on accident. You know what I mean? And yeah, I'm, I'm deep into that right now. So, yeah, I, I was very uh, atheistic. I mean, when I was a teenager, I was like, there's no God. Mm -hmm. And, and I was, I never went to church like ever. I don't think I've ever been to a literal, uh, church session or you know mass whatever it's called so for me you know i'm super spiritual now and i i have i facilitate spiritual baptisms you know i like i get people into all this and how it all occurred was psychedelics and giants is what you know brought me to know god as well as i do and like you're saying that i know that this place that we're in is very special and that it is very specific and that someone created this for us to do certain things and you know there's nothing better than getting in touch with the creator you know going from just living life and being miserable most of the time even though you think maybe i'm average maybe this is normal you know when it comes down to it and you start to heal yourself you're like oh i was miserable my life was not very fun very worth living and now it actually is and it's super fun getting into all these conspiracies yeah man and that hits home for me real hard i mean you know like i said i've had a few different psychedelic experiences that were like profound for me you know and um last year we could talk about this on your show right like this is yeah. too okay just make <laughs> some people are like wow, wow we don't want to talk about that no, but, yeah um, i get into all of it yeah but uh last year um you know and i had a few prior to this but last year um i ate some mushrooms and no kidding man i literally for the first time in my life saw god or jesus or whatever that you know i don't like to necessarily put names on it because i'm kind of like under the impression that the names were almost put there by the controllers at some point to throw us off a bit so i, I usually use the term the architect because i like the matrix movies a lot but you know, I saw that face that you would think of, right? And it wasn't like the Pope's son's face of Jesus, but like I just knew what it was. I could see these <laughs> sacred geometric patterns like coming out of me and they formed this face. And I knew instantly like that is the architect or God, right? Mm -hmm. And ever since that trip that I had, my entire life has been 100% different, man. I, and I don't like to use the word manifesting because I feel like there's some negative connotations to that. 
but I've literally been manifesting my whole last year in a very like weird kind of way without doing any practices or any kind of rich unconsciously like doing it yeah just knowing like okay i know that this is real i know what i'm here to do i'm gonna start this podcast i used to listen to like sam tripoli for years and years man like huge fan of sam tripoli yeah. i'd listen to tinfoil hat and just be like man you know that'd be cool right and then i started the podcast and lo and behold seven months in i'm talking to sam tripoli on his show and it yeah and that's happened like 20 times this year for all sorts of different situations getting in the rv meeting the girl that I'm dating now, you know, all the people that I've met doing this show, it's all just kind of fell into my lap. And I think it is because I just accepted the fact that this is an intelligently designed creation. You know, I, I speak out loud to what people would call God a lot. You know what I mean? Like, I guess you could call that praying. I don't really, you know what I mean? I don't do it uh, ritualistically or whatever, but you know, I, I just speak out loud, you know, and, and like things have just been perfect, man the whole time you know that that's so amazing and uh, i have on my website here i'll try to bring it up and i'll share the screen once i get it but i have on my website uh, pictures of jesus that i saw in the clouds so you know it's uh it's very funny that that we see that we all get to end up seeing the same type of the same face like you know it when you see it and uh, what is this oh i went to the wrong thing so uh you know when i saw it i was like blown away and my daughter's mom called me and i was i i'll pull it up in a second but i i just got done seeing it and i was out back on my patio and i wasn't tripping or anything uh i i might have just smoked a little bowl or something but i'm outside on my patio because my cat had run away and it's actually odd that she has run away here now she has She's been gone for a week now, but uh, she was gone and I was only outside because I was hoping to hear. And I look up at the clouds. I just get the sense to look up and I don't see anything. I just see clouds. And then I get the urge to take a picture with my phone. So then I just take a picture and lo and behold, there's Jesus right there. And I'm like, oh my God, what? And I had seen Jesus in a, a psychedelic trip he was this huge green face right in front of me, like uh, the Wizard of Oz style. And uh, he winked and nodded at me and smiled. And I was just like, wow, like that is amazing. Yeah. And when, like you said, when you see it, you know, like it, it wasn't even that defined of a face. You know what I mean? It was just like it was more so the energy. I think it was just like like I felt the ultimate sense of love and comfort. And I was actually tripping with somebody else who I'd never met before, which, you, as you know, is probably a big no-no. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, and they were like speaking in tongues and having like a terrible time, which normally would freak me out. But I was just overwhelmed with this sense of comfort that like, you know, I was literally reaching out with my, you know, like in my, my eyes are shut and it's dark and I'm literally doing this. You know, it was wild, man. It was crazy. Well, yeah, you can see here. Uh like this one, I have it marked off so you can see the two eyes. Like you can see, oh, the, yeah. And then you got the nose right here, the two nostrils, the mouth, yeah, and the little beard, the little goatee. I was like, oh my wow. god, it's Jesus! Look, this is my cat. This is, this is a samurai bang. You see the samurai helmet right here, the dark places, oh, yeah. and then the eye, and then the whiskers. So this is this being entered my cat. I got all sorts of uh, great photos on here. But what? That's wild. Yeah, yeah. I have and what i learned is that clouds are conscious you know water is alive water is the only living thing in our universe it's what every living thing needs to stay alive because once we dry up then we're dead so it's the water that actually keeps us alive and clouds are just water vapor just massive uh, amounts of water vapor so they're consciousness and this is what i first saw was this popped up you see the uh, cross on the forehead and the eyes right oh yeah Okay. Yeah, two eyes right there. So this is the patio that was above mine. So I, like I said, I was just, you know, just randomly took a picture. So I took a picture, saw that, and I was like, whoa. And then I uh, snapped another photo, and the mist that was around the nose and mouth cleared away, and it was Jesus. It's like, oh, well. That's wild, man. Yeah, then I got one with, like, these lizard eyes right here. You can see. Like these ones are real, really real. 
uh, the cloud yeah. almost it almost looks fake. Oh, did you outline that? Is that why? <coughs> what the, the house? One, yeah, that that one there. Yeah. Yeah. So what I did, I uh, turned down the contrast and turned up the uh, I forget what it what it's called, but the brightness. I think I turn up the brightness and turn down the contrast so that you can see and mm. you know it's got like a little pig nose right here. Yeah. Like it, it looks like it's up with two nostrils and then the two eyes. And then this one, it's like a little brown man right here. So the, the photo is obviously not in the color that I saw him, but he was brown when I saw him. And he's got the, the nose right here. It, like he looks like uh, an Indian, like from India. And and then you can see here, it's like this is like a gray alien right here with the eyes all stretched out. Some wild stuff that's going on in our clouds, you know? Yeah, man. I actually got a uh, an interview set up with Matt Landman um, next week. Um, you familiar with Matt Landman? No, I am not. Have you seen the film Frankenskies? Oh, yes. Yeah, so that's his film, right? Yeah, that's his film. Okay. And he's like the chemtrail guy, right? Or the geoengineering okay. guy. But yeah, he's coming on. And I'm, I got so many questions and stuff for him about the clouds and stuff, man. I'm gonna... Yeah, that's super wild. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you want to get into the electric universe here a little bit? Yeah, man. What, what kind of thoughts you got on it? So uh, we're definitely an electric universe. I mean, we're electrical beings in an electrical universe. Um, have you ever heard of the Carrington event? The Carrington event. Yeah. Okay. So 1859, the Carrington event hits. And then in 1860, humanity starts what we know as the seasonal flu. So prior to that, we would get the flu in bunches uh, through, you know, hundreds or thousands of years of uh, quote unquote recorded history. There would be groups of years that we would all be sick. And then in 1860, it started every seasonal flu. So every year we were we would get this. Then in 1866, anxiety starts or maybe a 65, it was somewhere around there, between 65 and 67, anxiety and depression both start after this electrical event that affected our electrical universe and the electrical beings that are in it. Something was negative here, lowering our uh, electrical status, whatever that that is. You know, that that's just my opinion, but every time we have a massive outbreak of a flu type virus in the earth is also when new uh, types of frequencies are introduced like the radio waves and with the Spanish flu I forget what it was in, with the Hong Kong flu in the 70s there was something microwaves maybe and then uh, then with the bird flu and the uh, swine flu came 3G and 4G and now with this flu 5G it's very, and I'm not even into a 5G conspiracy theorist. You know, this is just simple logic to me. It's just electrical uh, impulses, and and we're electrical beings in an electrical universe. You know, to me, one plus one equals two. Yeah, hundred percent. And I've gotten pretty deep into the 5G stuff myself personally. And dude, there that that is sketchy. But yeah, like, there's definitely something to electrical phenomenon. Um, on the earth and outside of the firmament or in space or whatever your belief is on that. But like a hundred percent, man. I mean, um, again, going back to David Icke, he talks about like the uh, Saturn moon matrix, how uh, Saturn is pumping out a frequency and it's being amplified off of the moon. And like, that's helping this whole false matrix that we're living in or that we're perceiving, I guess. But, mm. you Makes know, sense. Yeah, everything is electric. There's a document. Um, what's the document called? Uh, Analysis and Assessment of Gateway Process. It's an Army intelligence document that was put out in the 80s. And it was basically the full analysis of all of the shit that they were doing since like the 50s, right? With like MK Ultra and blah, 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 all these different things. And in that document, it specifically says that the universe is in and of itself one gigantic hologram of incredible complexity. I think that's the exact quote. I might have remembered that. I might have nailed that. Um, but, you know, a hologram 
is nothing more than light and sound vibrations interacting with each other, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this kind of, and I'm kind of straying off Electric Universe a little bit, but um, like in the Bible, right? Like God spoke the universe into existence. And then in Buddhism, the Om is the sound of the creation of the universe. Right. Both God speaking and the Om are sound vibrations, right? Mm -hmm. And they're right. interacting with light to create this holographic universe in the electric right. universe model. If you get into like, um, what's the guy's name? The author of one of those books, Talbot, I forget his first name. He, uh, outlines that basically in the golden age, right? Saturn was its own system floating through the ether, right? Or space. And it was in perfect alignment electrically with, I believe Mars, Venus, and the earth. But basically, um, the Saturn system was captured by the soul system or our sun. And in the Golden Age, it's said in, in many mythologies that we lived in perpetual darkness for like in a state of dusk almost all the time. The sky was purple. There was no seasons. There was no night and day. There was no way for us to, to keep track of time, right? So there was this, this idea of abundance. Everything was in harmony and abundant and there was no time or seasons. And then once the sun uh, captured the Saturn system, it dispersed Saturn out into the you know, void right further away and it captured the earth and it caused all of this uh, solar system upheaval, right? And in that, it dispersed this purple fog that was on the earth and now we could see the sunlight from Sol, and it started, we can keep track of the days and the weeks and the seasons. And that created wintertime, which created, you know, famines. And it created summer, which created droughts. And then, like, that's how we went from this abundant golden age to this, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Scarcity, right? And this current age. And that's kind of like the idea where like these Saturn death cult people, right? These, these reptilians, mm -hmm. these lizard people that worship Saturn in all these weird ways. It's like, they're trying to do a technological version of the golden age. That's why they're doing like SRMs to block the sun and doing all these other things. But like, yeah, the electric universe theory, you could really tie that into some deep, you know, yeah. that's why they hate phenomenon. God. You know, you could explain yeah. it that way. If the sun is God and the sun well, so I've done a deep dive on the Book of Enoch, and as I was saying, like, I'm psychic, and I I get all these different things in my meditations and all, and the stars are the watchers, uh, and the planets are wandering stars, and they are locked in chains around God, worshiping God, because they left heaven and shouldn't have, so they came down and they were lighting the earth. The earth had all these different false lights that were blocking out the sun. And then the sun god was like, oh, you guys want to block out my light? And then somehow dispersed all them, as you said, locked them in their chains, the chains, and that's why they hate God. You know, because they're like, oh, well, we had the sun all the time. We had different lights all the time. We had everything in abundance. Now, why... God would do that, I don't have the answer to, you know, there's, and it, it seems obvious to me that if God dispersed them out because he told them not to come down here and then they disobeyed, then obviously he would toss them out. So to me, like what I see, what I've been seeing the last few days was that it's like a dad sitting down or, or the kids are playing like Monopoly, right? There's like 10 kids or so that are playing Monopoly, and then the dad's like, oh, I want to play. So then the dad jumps in. And then what happens is, the, instead of it being Monopoly, they have their own types of people. They've created their own people. And God creates the Israelites. And he's like, okay. You know, he creates two Israelites named Adam and Eve. And he says, I bet you my people are going to be all your people. And you guys can all team up on me, and we'll see what happens. And, you know... That now God's people have taken over and everybody's an Israelite. Uh, you know, we're all, well, maybe not all of us, but uh, for the most part, all of humanity is pretty even. We're, you know, whereas it used to be a place where it was very different before. There were dog-headed beings. There were, 
bullheaded beings there were fish body beings you know like mermaids and there were all types of stuff going on here and now everything seems to be about one <clears throat> but w what's really interesting to me in this whole concept that i'm seeing and gathering in my mind is when you look at a flat earth map well i don't want to say just a flat earth map on the globes as well they have different lines that represent the Tropic of Cancer, Capricorn, they have the equator, they have the Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle. So last week, or a few weeks ago, I was talking to Ryan Zem uh, in episode 52. He showed us this map from 1587. And in it, Antarctica is called Terra del Fuego, the land of fire, which actually it still exists at the bottom of South America, but it's not really inhabited by people. But it was called the land of fire and in this map there are drawings of dinosaurs and as we know dinosaurs weren't discovered until 1800s and that they rebranded dragons into dinosaurs so what we have is a map with mermaids on it uh with a woman you know with breast and a panther face or no it, yeah i think it's a panther body with a woman a woman's breast and a woman's face and then there's a mermaid and then there are dinosaurs three different types of dinosaurs and they're all in antarctica and there's this line going around it it's the antarctic circle and i so i said something to ryan i'm like what's that line for and immediately what popped in my mind when i heard about the uh the saturn being the sun that was worshipped was oh that was locked in place around the entire earth and it was closer so it was hotter so that's why only the larger things could live there the the giants uh, patagonia is the land of giants in south america and there are more dinosaur bones found in antarctica than anywhere and obviously we're not allowed to go to antarctica so it was some kind of rainforest down there and i think that you know that somehow it was going in a circle and i think that uh hyperborea you're familiar with hyperborea mm -hmm. so i think that was probably magnetic north there are different maps where they have a square a cube shape but it's two-dimensional so it's square a square black object in the center and then hyperborea is around it so that's probably probably where the black cube worship comes from is the magnetic pole that kept Saturn in place uh, as Saturn went around the outside rings and you know Jupiter was probably on a one inside of it and and so on and so forth like they were just all doing their thing above us and we were getting all these lights from all of these different planets but we shouldn't have been you know right so yeah, that, I'm not sure what happened that fits right into like the electric universe stuff because i mean like i said that the idea is that saturn was its own system and and all of the other not all of the other planets but i think it was just mars venus and earth um were locked in like um like there wasn't they weren't orbiting around each other they were locked in place you know mm -hmm. boom 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 flying through space together you know what i'm saying and i mean if it, i don't really know the science behind it like talbot does but you know, there's like plasma experiments that they're doing and stuff like this that kind of show that you can lock um, mass into place like that using plasma and electromagnetic, you know, forces and things like that. So that's super interesting to me, like that whole thing. Like, I mean, I've done some deep dives into it. I've If you go on, uh, what's the website? Um, Thunderboltsproject.com, I think it is, or .org maybe. Um, they have like a lot of really cool graphics that kind of show what what people were seeing in the skies during the golden age and during the catas the cataclysms that happened while Saturn was being dispersed, right? And they show these um, it's called the Sapphire Project that are doing the plasma experiments, and they show like this is what it would look like if you had these giant bodies all lined up, and then these things happened. And it looks just like cave paintings. It looks just like the artwork that you see in a lot of mythological books and things like that. So it's almost as if they were seeing this stuff happen in the sky, kind of like what you were saying earlier. And then they were like writing stuff down in the only way that they could explain to be like, oh, you know, 
Um, I don't know. I couldn't give you an example off the top of my head. You know, the, the great dragon in the sky or whatever, or even um, the uh, Egyptian crowns, right? They're like these long the headdresses kind of point up to a ball. Uh, you know okay. Saying? Yeah. Yeah. And like they show these plasma experiments where it's like you have one body here and it does that weird crown shape to like another body over here because they're separating over time oh, wow. and it's like stretching out this long plasma lightning bolt in, in the sky and they probably see that for a hundred years or a thousand years before it got further and then it would start to crown out so that's where you get the idea of like the crown um visualizations that you see on in like ancient greek mythologies and things like that yeah. so it's really interesting stuff. If anybody, again, I'm not an expert in this, so I can't really explain it too well. But if you go look, how at long ago Project, do you think it, are they saying this was? Um, they don't really put a specific date on it. I think a lot of that stuff they try to correlate it with like timelines that are accepted by mainstream. Yeah, and I think there's archaeology. I but, think those uh, timelines, the mainstream ones, are nonsense in some yeah, sense. And I, I believe so as well. So like, I, I only put so much stock into that stuff just because like, how do we know that any of that stuff is actually fitting into the timeline? And then they also use a lot of like NASA's space models to show the orbiting and the casting of the planets and stuff. So I don't really know how much I put into that. But when you look at the Thunderbolts project, um, dang, I wish I could remember, like there's a playlist on YouTube where it's all of that stuff. It's just a whole like 10 hours of them showing what the ancients would see with these plasma reactions in the sky. And like, this is why they wrote this story and this is why they painted this thing on these walls. You know what I mean? It's like super interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, that would be uh, really cool. Uh, but when I, what I was just saying there, you know, cause people are gonna say, you know, why do you think the timeline's bullshit? Well. I don't even go to Fomenko, you know, I think that's a bunch of nonsense. I think that that's all just not real uh, in, in some sense. You know, maybe he really came up with the, these types of ideas. I just don't think that it, it's true. So uh, what I mean with the timeline is I, I know that we're in some kind of inception type of dream. And are you familiar with the movie Inception? Oh, yeah. Okay, so they're on one level and time moves uh, in a certain span and then when you go down lower it starts to slow down so one minute up here equals like what 10 minutes down there and then you go to the third level and it's like 10 years or something then you go to mm -hmm. the fourth level and it's like ten thousand years so time acts very differently so i think that somehow maybe around 1500 maybe around 1700 that we were on a higher level and then we went down further, and it hasn't actually been that long, but they tell us the Ice Age was 12,000 years ago that it ended. But it was actually more like 500 years ago or something. But it's because we went deeper into the dream. Something took us deeper into the dream. So where we are now technically would have been 12,000 years ago, except we weren't here for it then we were up at the next level so we didn't experience it down here we experienced it up there you know, it, I, I don't know it kind of just like it, it comes to me in waves like that like it, these intuitive thoughts and it's just like it, it kind of helps me understand why history seems to be so off in the way that they keep time well, there's actually scientific, well, I don't know, I'm like one of these don't trust the experts guys, but there's like scientific uh, experiments done like at CERN, for instance, um, where they show in quantum physics that that is a real situation. And, and they do a lot of predictive programming, mm -hmm. like in, in Inception and also in Interstellar when they go to that water planet. And it's mm -hmm. like, I don't remember, it's like one minute here is like seven years on Earth or whatever. You know what I mean? You ever seen that yeah. movie Interstellar? I, I didn't see the water. I seen about the first half of it, so I didn't get to see them okay. take off. Yeah, there's a part there, and like, you know, I'm gonna ruin the movie for you, but basically the time is is um, distorted like that. Okay. You know what I mean? And they're freaking out because they're like, "Oh crap, we gotta hurry up because if we're here for too long, the whole world that we're trying to save is gone." You know what I right. mean? And so there, but there is some quantum 
um, science, quantum physics science that CERN's doing that's showing that time is not, time is only relative, right? I mean, we've all said that in our hippie moments, right? We're like, oh, time's relative and all these things, but no, it's true. You know what I mean? It, mm. you, a, a particle is experiencing time much differently than a planet is experiencing mm -hmm. time. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's a really good point. It's deep. Yeah. And uh, as you were saying earlier with the holographic universe, quantum physics explains it uh, so simply is everything's rendering because until it's observed, then it becomes stationary. So, mm -hmm. I mean, right there, it tells you this is a video game. It tells you it's a holographic universe because if everything's always moving, vibrating, it's a frequency moving up and down a particle or a wave going up and down always until we look at it, then we make it stationary. Then that means it's always rendering, you know, it's just out of our eye reach and we'll never see it because as soon as we look at it, then it's stationary. And I mm -hmm. wonder if that has something to do with the going deeper into the dream with uh, the electrical universe, maybe shocking us into existence in a different way with a Carrington event. I don't know. That, that just popped into my head now, maybe that uh, we became more dense. Yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. I think that the, like the stories you get in all these different religions and mythologies of like the, like the falling, right. Or like descending from heaven down into like, like all the, the, that idea I think is them trying to explain what you're saying. Like we were, yeah. we're just going lower and lower vibration. I think we're at the lowest point now. Yeah. Yeah. We might be, I mean, I hope not. Well, I guess I, maybe we, I hope we do cause then we can only go up. So yeah, yeah, that's know. right. <laughs> but I wonder if that observer effect that you're talking about affects a lot more than just like particle physics, because like when you think about the tribalism in our world now, for instance, you know, everybody's got a team and everybody has like an opinion. Let's use flat earth for an example, right? If you, I truly believe this. If you really believe that the earth is a globe, you will find all the evidence to show you that it's a globe. And if you really believe it's flat, you'll find all the evidence to show you right. that it's flat. So I think that the observer effect goes even deeper well, into that, you know? So I've been getting into that lately is that not those specific topics, but that whatever you want to find, you'll find evidence for. If you want to believe whatever you want to believe, you're going to find evidence for. And I believe that's the mark of Satan having confusion over everything. Everything is misinformation. Everything is disinformation. Nothing is objective it's all subjective and subjective truths aren't actually truths i used to think i was of the thinking that oh no it's only someone's perspective that makes it true so therefore subjective truth is the only truth and then i realized well if i say the word pat uh, like pat on the back and you hear me say the word bat like uh, a baseball bat and you're preferencing your perception of uh, what i said of a false word, uh, then you're living a lie. So your subjective truth isn't actually real. You're actually subjecting yourself to lies that you're believing. And, and this is where we get into, uh, the part of spirituality where it becomes nonsense that, uh, you know, we, we say that we are, uh, there's only subjective truths and it's all everyone's opinion is of equal truth because that's how they feel and it's just not true uh, but you know not that every everyone should feel entitled to their opinion and all but everyone should also make an effort to make sure they're getting the objective truth that they're saying everything from every different angle to get the one truth because you know the term truth uh, you hear the helicopter can you hear in the microphone you, man that's the now we, bro, they're on the way <laughs> we live not not far from a uh, army base but i'm hearing a pick up on the microphone real bad um but you know when we we just have to recognize that there, the word truth means that there's only one you know mm -hmm. that that's what that word means is there's either truth or it's not truth and if it's not truth not that's necessarily a lie but it's a false thing so when we get into subjective truths, and then I, I know that some people will say, well, we're making the words are subjective, uh, you know, that our definitions of words may be subjective. 
Well, that's true. And in my example uh, that I was using, there's objective words that we both agreed have certain meanings. So therefore, it is still an objective thing. So if you're hearing the wrong word, then that's a subjective truth. And it's therefore not a not a true thing. So, you know, I don't even know why I got off on this. Oh, because Satan is running everything, you know, uh, William Casey, head of the CIA in 81. He said, we'll know we have completed our job when the American people believe the truth is are all lies and all the lies are truth. Something yeah, to that I think, effect. I think the quote is, we'll know our disinformation campaigns are complete when everything the American people believes is a lie. Or false. Uh, I'm not sure if you use lie or false. Yeah, it's something to that effect. Yeah, man. That's deep stuff. But even the words themselves, like here's the the other thing, and I'm sure you know about this, but like uh, like word magic, right? Like the word spelling, right? Like you're yeah. spelling, you're casting a spell with words. And I think that like the story of um, the Tower of Babel, there's something to that, right? Like you babble wonder, on. Yeah, like every little, not every word, but so many words like cure, right? Like oh, uh, the, the doctor is going to cure me. And it's like, well, cure could mean to fix it or it also could mean to preserve it, mm -hmm. right? And it's like this weird double-edged sword with a lot of these words, you know what I mean? So I wonder if we're even going to be able to nail down the absolute truth using these languages that were designed to keep us in this perpetual state of not knowing, you know what I mean? So Right, and they kill... Like go back and learn like ancient Sumerian or something to be able right. to like... Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, they when they kill Latin, which seems to be Latin to me, it seems to be some kind of universal language that was used for a period of time. Ever, all the medical information, all the legal information, and all the maps are all written in Latin. So no matter where the person was from, everything's written in Latin. It must have been a universal language that everybody knew had to know Latin in order to speak universally. And now we don't have that. We And we have different things that are offshoots kind of like that, like English is the dominant language of business. But like you said, English is a magic language. And it's, there's so many different things that we're saying when we say certain words. Like even I hear a lot of conspiracy theorists use the word E-L-I-T-E. I don't use that any longer because I realize that the ending of ITE means uh, of, a people of. So when you have L, ITE, you know, the people of L, people of God. And maybe they are, I'm learning that L may not be God, that L may be one of these demigods and may be uh, Baal or Baal. Ba Baal, however you say his name, is the son of El. And maybe El is the son of Yahweh or something to that effect. I don't know. I'm... I always wondered if El is Enlil. Like, in, like you know, Enki yeah. and Enlil. Yeah. You know, I, I always kind of like I, make that connection in my mind when I hear that. So I had a guy, Ed Dodge, on, and he really studied the stuff, and he said that they were two different beings. That So I was asking him about that, and he said... There were four main gods, so he studied like every myth, and uh, he really put them all together into a a concisive narrative that you could see that certain names were switched out, but certain names stayed the same no matter which place was talking about it. And he was saying Enki and Enlil, and I think Anu and Anana, something I forget exactly, but there were four that were the head gods and then L was on the next level down and you know he he wasn't the son of but it was kind of like he was kind of equal to but still a little less than you know it's kind of hard to describe i guess we it's something that we can understand yeah i mean and especially when you get into like the fact that like the anunnaki right like they could have been doing genetic splicing and cloning and all that stuff so they could have been literally like the same beings cloned you know with different attributes or something i don't know but that's a good point I, yeah you know and i always wonder like <clears throat> you know the like um i don't remember like the 
the quote from the Bible, but something along the lines of doing uh, creating chimeras, right, or doing genetic manipulation, like that in itself is a sin, right? Mm -hmm. So if you go back to like these ancient cultures, like, and they talk about the Anunnaki or even like Atlantis and stuff, it's like they were all doing this genetic splicing and then they were just wiped off the earth. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. Yeah. And they definitely were doing uh, genetic splicing. Uh, it's in the book of Enoch too. It says that they started messing with the reptiles and the bees and the beasts of the earth. And then you look at the dog headed beings, the lion headed beings. I would ask Gary Wayne about this. Uh, the other day in the round table and he was like oh yeah that was exactly happening and he said oh but there's more you know it's not just that they were splicing it together it's that they are these beings that that can somehow take physical form and they look like that and then they have sex with women and then the women give birth uh to these different beings like there's this new movie coming out and i don't want to I said it another time, I don't want to keep giving this movie publicity, but this movie called Lamb, uh, there's a trailer for it, and it's this woman gives birth, or no, a, a goat gives birth to a, a child that's human up to the neck and then has a goat head. And it's like, oh, yeah, th you know, they're readying us for it because we're about to start seeing that type of stuff. Yeah, they're, pro they're programming us for 2030. Hybrids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm the same way. I don't like to necessarily give publicity to like Netflix or anything like that. But right. if you've got the eyes to see the underlying messages and things, I don't see so much harm in watching those things. Like for mm -hmm. me, for instance, there was a long time I didn't watch Netflix at all. Right? I didn't even mm -hmm. have a Netflix. Like uh, I'd much rather watch some crazy YouTube video about some guy ranting about whatever conspiracy theory that's way more entertaining to me than some scripted show on netflix however when you see the underlying messages in a lot of those right. shows and movies it's a whole nother thing like yeah i can appreciate the cgi and it looks and sounds great and the action's cool but then like there's this show um that just came out called oats uh, oats studios and it's like kind of black mirror -y, where every episode's different you know what i mean but that first episode, and it's interesting that they made this the first pilot episode. It's all about reptiles that came here to conquer humanity, like literal little reptilians. They used the black goo all over that show, you know, like the transhumanism, black right. goo situation. And also like physical transhumanism where there's like people mixed with cybernetics. And like, dude, I was watching that and I kept looking at my girlfriend. I was like, dude, you see that? You see that? You see that? <laughs> like the whole time. And, you know. Yeah. The predictive programming is insane. And there's a lot of shows that have like hybrid humans, you know, animal hybrid humans that are coming out lately. So it's interesting to see that. Yeah. Well, we went from all superheroes uh, in the teens. You know, it started kind of in the 2000s where superheroes were getting popular. Then all throughout the teens, it was a ton of them. I mean, that's what everything became a, a remake of a superhero movie. And they're still doing it, but now they're introducing the other ideas because what I think is happening, because I've been experiencing these new superpowers that I've gained over the last few years, uh, like I think that we're becoming the Olympians, you know, to borrow from the Greeks, we're becoming the Olympians and we're going to be battling the Titans, something to that effect. And I think that they are setting the stage for all of it that they're making revelation happen because i actually think we're in a post-rapture world that uh, the rapture happened in like the late 1700s so i think that they're trying to bring it back to have like one final battle something like that which which is odd i'll let you get in a second which is odd because when i was listening to something about the saturn death cult today i started seeing that the that the black sun is coming into our, uh, I don't know how to explain it, I don't believe in solar systems, but coming into our area to battle against the white sun in order to try to get rid of the white sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Project Bluebeam. This is my version of Project Bluebeam 
all day, man. Because, you know, there's like the standard watered down version of Pro Project Blue Beam. Oh, they're just going to do a fake alien invasion with holograms. And I'm like, okay, maybe. I mean, sure. But what I think Project Blue Beam really is, is what you're saying. I think that they're prepping all of us to fight whatever is coming. But here's the thing, right? It's kind of hard to explain. I think, so you think that we're in a post rapture world i'm thinking maybe they know through numerology or whatever the case prophecies anything like that they know that the coming is happening the second coming is happening they might even have it down to a day right so they're trying to get us ready with transhumanism and all these other things uh and also like brainwashing everybody to not believe in in mm -hmm. god and that kind of thing right so that when that coming happens we'll all be more willing to fight against it, right? If they tell us this is a, a threat, a hostile alien threat, right, that's coming here, we'll all be ready to get on, get to arms and fight against the coming, right? And it's like, that kind of freaks me out a little bit because I'm like, dang, man, because if the aliens showed up, I might be one of them too. I might be ready to start popping caps, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> then in the back of my mind i'm like well maybe that is the second coming and they're just brainwashing us to be ready to fight against it right because again they hate god they hate all of that stuff so that's kind of what i think is going to happen yeah well yeah i don't know how the second coming i don't know if it would be the third i don't know if the rapture happened without jesus coming back and now he would be coming back and this would be the second coming but it's i think it's the final judgment uh, mm -hmm. and the bible says that there is going to be two judgments so you know in my opinion i think the first one uh happened already uh, are you familiar with emmanuel swedesburg no that name sounds familiar but i can't i can't say uh, i am so he was this scientist in the 1700s who then all of a sudden one day on easter day uh, of all days woke up and saw jesus in front of him and he became the spiritual person so he was became super psychic super into jesus and talking about that the rapture is about to happen he he was an an honorary member of parliament you know they asked him to join parliament because of his scientific knowledge and understandings and writings mm -hmm. they asked him to be part of parliament changed his name to emmanuel swedenberg and he wrote exactly the day he was going to die he told people like i'm going to die march 29th of next year and then he did he said well he said i'm not going to come back he didn't say i'll die he, was, he said i'm not going to come back after that day and you know it's just th there's bits there's fragments of it but logically to me it makes sense and intuitively with my psychic connection i it, it kind of makes sense and in the way the catholics depict these saints always with halos around their head golden halos around their head that maybe they got, you know, and where did all the different Tartarian cultures go to? Where did the mines go to? Uh, these different cultures that just disappeared, where did they go? I think that they might have been raptured away. Mm. And I don't know that, you know, I don't know how, how any of it works, obviously, you know, it's only speculation and, and opinion. But to what you're saying, I do think that there is a second coming. And I think Project Bluebeam is there in order to put people at ease like oh it's not real like the people who would actually fight against it that just like the q thing you know is like oh don't worry we got it you know we know it's all fake but we got this so that they're going to kind of lull people but then it's going to actually be real beings i think it's going to be the real anunnaki uh, and maybe others i actually had it seen in my meditation the other day that they had to escape the earth because it was no longer safe for them to stay on the inner earth and the the cave systems that they've been in that they had to exit it and now they're in the atmosphere and that they're possibly they're going to have to show themselves because they can't just stay in the clouds forever so i think mm. that there is going to be real beings that do i don't know if they're going to come in peace at first or if they're going to come you know warring but i think that they're going to come and i think eventually they're going to be tricking people into giving their life to them for whatever reason i don't know something to that effect
that I mean, yeah, I definitely, yeah, I, I can agree with that 100%, to be honest with you, because, I mean, like I said, it's all speculation. Nobody really knows, but, mm-hmm. you know, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, if the Anunnaki or whoever it is shows up and 90% of the population decides to go with them because, you know, climate change and we, we got to get out of here <laughs> and everybody just goes, you know, but... right it kind of puts me in a, in between a rock and a hard place. Cause I am, I, like I said, I think I'd be one of these people who would be, you know, fighting against the reptilians that showed up, but at the same time, you got a good enough argument. I might get on, on the ship with you. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't really know what to do about that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. Yeah. I, and the only thing you can really trust is your intuition at the end of the day, you know, it's, what's your first thought when something happens you know if you have a bad feeling about it, it's like that's probably bad and if you have a good feeling about it, it's probably good so you know whatever that first um uh, the first intuitive thought that feeling is that's that's what i'm going to go with whatever i see like am i going to know if they're on my team like i think i have a feeling that we would know inherently when we see it if it's real like you said when you saw uh, Jesus, when you did the mushrooms, when I saw him in the clouds, I just knew inherently mm-hmm. like, oh, uh, yeah, I know that face, you know, and the first thought I had was, oh, that's me, you know, like that's, that's a piece of me in some way. So I think we just know, but I guess it's to be determined until it happens. And, you know, we're entering the final stages of Libra here. I can't believe we're halfway through October already. It has been flying by. But as we finish up in Libra, you know, I think that uh, as we get closer to December, I think it's going to be a December to remember. You know, twelve twenty one, take it away. You know, that's been everything has been setting up for the month of December and the year of twenty twenty one, and come twenty twenty two, I think it's going to be very different than we could ever have imagined. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's wild. And it seems like time is accelerating. And I know people, mm-hmm. ever since I was a kid, you know, my parents would be like, oh, you know, time's faster when I'm older. So it could be partially that, like I'm just perceiving right. time differently because I have more memories to think about and all these things. But it does seem like time is accelerating. You know, I remember when an eight hour workday seemed like forever. Now I show up and I'm done. And I'm like, whoa, we're done already? You know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and the, the, with me, I experience time in an odd way because when I reflect, I'm like, man, it's almost the end of 2021. I'm like, it just, you know, it doesn't feel that long ago that it was January. And then I'm like, but the summer felt forever ago. You know, like two months ago, like that was such, I was in such a different mindset that it just doesn't feel like it was very close. But but like I said, it feels like time is moving so fast. So it's so awkward for me to think about things and reflect on it because it's like it's moving quickly, but so quickly that it makes things that weren't that long ago feel very long ago. And things that were further away seem not so far away. It, it, you know, it's this very odd place. Yeah, I wonder if that's some of the mad scientists tweaking stuff too. You know, at CERN, they're melding dimensions or whatever. I think the head of CERN <laughs> was quoted saying, um, you know, we're peering into alternate dimensions and bringing back data into this one. But if you think about this system we live in as a simulation, for instance, it's like a computer. If you introduce foreign code into your computer, what happens? You get like a blue screen or error code or like, things just go to shit and Mm -hmm. if we're living in some form of simulation or a hologram of some kind and they're peering into alternate dimensions and bringing back data you know i think that that's where you get like the mandela effect and like this weird distortion of time and like all these things are happening because they're literally bringing foreign code into the simulation so Mm. it's kind of a good point yeah yeah who knows man there's so many different possibilities of everything and what i just try doing is i just i think of every possibility that i can for a situation and i think of how it can logically fit in with all the other information that i have 
And for me, it's kind of like, you know, I'll take bits and pieces of different things and put them together because they all fit that way. And m maybe it's wrong. Maybe I'm making connections that aren't there or shouldn't be there. Uh, but it, it seems to be that there are so many possibilities of the truth that all we can do is just think of the possibilities, have the imagination and, and think. And then once we keep finding out more information and more information, the false lies, the, the fakeness of everything will fall away from us. And we can't really know the truth until the lies start falling away. And then we build this foundation and we're like, okay, well, you know, I can buy this. And then we set up our, what, what we see as a possibility. But at the end of the day, everything I say is a, t a possibility. You know, I'm, I'm always open-minded to, to new information, better information, stronger information, because I want to, I just want to know the truth. And the way you do it is by looking for information. And when you find that something's clearly false, you just let it go away from you. Yeah. And it's a fun way to live in this reality. I think it's a much more, uh, if anything, you know, at the base level of it is a funner way to experience this life, to question everything, to think about all the possibilities. That's why, I mean, that's why I started a podcast. I can imagine that's half the reason you started one too, is to just talk to people, yep. get the different perspectives. Then you can go to bed tonight, just pondering these things. Then tomorrow it'll be something else. And it's way more interesting than just trusting the ex experts and just trusting the history and, and all of these things, you know what I mean? It's, it's much more entertaining. It's like, I live in my own movie. Like this is right. the best movie I've ever been in. You know what I mean? Every day, yeah. you know? So yeah, it's, my, my day job's getting in the way anymore lately. I've been so busy with uh, recording and, and I'm trying to do bigger and better things. And so that takes time here and, I'm just working too much. You know, I need to, uh, I need to be able to you make both. money at home. You and me both, brother. I got two jobs right now, working six days a week, doubles on one day out of those six. And then I got, I'm doing two, three. Last week I did five shows, you know, so it was just like nonstop. Yeah. I feel like I'm burning the candle at both ends sometimes. Yeah, but too. then like I look back and I'm like, wow, man, like, I've gotten so much new information and then like now I go to work where I used to hate being at work all day. Now, like I enjoy it, man. I'm out in the sun, I'm sweating, I'm feeling good. I'm getting like a workout in and it's like my whole perspective on the struggles of burning that candle at both ends is now turning into like, I'm doing things, you know, I feel productive. I feel confident and happy with the things I'm doing, even though I'm stuck at a day job, you know what I mean? So I think it is just really a lot of perspective and once you can break those paradigms of like you're just in this box you're just an accident all those things once you break out of that paradigm and anything is possible for you then you can like truly enjoy yourself in the most mundane things that you're doing like work you know what i mean yeah yeah you're right and i do i did need my job you know at one time uh spiritually i needed it to ground myself in order to be able to integrate myself back into society. I was vibing too high and I I couldn't communicate with humans any longer. You know, I was just like doing all these things to raise my vibration. You know, I was fasting, I was exercising like crazy. I was in the sun, sun gazing, meditating all the time. I was in the, the grass and nature. Like I was just vibing so high and then it was like, okay, time to integrate everything you've learned in the last six months. And I was like, man, and it was like a crash course. And But then now I'm at a place where, uh, as you were saying with the Netflix, I can watch things and they don't affect my spirit any longer. Like I'm able to clear it off fairly quickly if it does affect me. Or I'll just turn it off if it starts to affect me really. But, but I'm able to move through this world and be unbothered by the things that are happening uh, in my general vicinity. And I'm able to still listen to podcasts because and audiobooks while I work. And that's really beneficial for my podcast and for myself. So, you know, that's always a fun time. But, 
you know, I just wish it wasn't so long. I wish that maybe my days were much shorter so that I could put more effort towards here. But I know that one day it's going to be gone and I'm going to reflect on it like, man, I wish I had something to take my attention away from this. And it's like, uh, you know, the grass is always greener. Yeah, it's always greener, man. You got to be like water, right? Ever, ever changing, ever flowing. It's like that that's the truth, man. And but like even just going back to like genetic memory stuff, right, on a very basic level, not every person, not every one of our ancestors was a shaman. Most of our ancestors were workers and and like, you know, there's a part of our DNA that wants to f do something mm -hmm. uh, productive in the physical realm. You know what I mean? And then there's the other part of all of our ancestors that wanted to do something productive in the spiritual realm. So I think you do just got to find that balance. It's like the whole idea of polarity, right? You got to you got to have both and you got to find that equilibrium where you can enjoy yourself doing both because you don't want to burn out. I did it to myself a few months ago with the podcast. I just put every extra hour I had into the podcast for all sorts of stuff and I got burnt out. And then I, I did like three weeks with no episodes because I just didn't, I wasn't feeling it. You know what I mean? And I think I was just, you know, I burned myself out on it. So you got to find yeah. that happy medium, get into the podcast for a few hours, get your vibe on and go to work, get your old ancient worker dna going for a <laughs> while and you know what i mean go back and forth yeah yeah man this was a great conversation uh you know i liked it was uh just hanging out you know shooting the shit this was a, a good good conversation and he taught me some stuff about uh the electrical universe and holograph universe i i do you know since i already know that the electrical universe is a real thing i knew it spiritually i was like i never really looked into the uh, the specifics the science behind it until today i looked up something uh or yeah i listened to something and i was like well wow. like yeah that that really fits in with a lot so maybe that is a new topic i'll need to start deep diving into yeah and you know it just came to me too symbols of an ancient sky or something like that if you go to the thunderbolts project youtube channel they got a whole playlist. I believe it's like symbols of an ancient sky or hidden symbols of an ancient sky, something like that. And just that alone, you don't have to get into the whole scientific plasma electric universe stuff. You can just get into the symbolism of what the people were seeing and dude, that alone will like open up your whole idea of what these people were writing down, man. Like I, I still watch, I've watched them all multiple times and I still click them on sometimes and I'm like, dude, that's it, man. Like that's it. Well, uh, yeah, this was a great, this was a banger for me, man. This is awesome. I I thoroughly enjoy talking to you, man. It's nice to talk to somebody who can go as deep and mm -hmm. kind of vibe off the same random weird stuff. You know what I mean? Not everybody. Yeah, we were all it. over the place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's how my mind works. So I'm like, all right, it was free flowing for me. Yeah, man, for sure. We'll definitely have to do this again sometime for sure, man. Yeah. And what you were just saying there about the, the symbols and what they were drawing. You know, it came to me earlier, uh, I forgot to say it though, that uh, w when I said that we came further into the dream, I think that we just don't have the memory of being up there and all of our memories were that, oh, we were always down here, something to that effect. Mm. And what you were just saying, like, I wonder if that was us drawing those things, we just don't remember it was us, you know? Mm. Yeah, man. Could be. Could even literally be us. Past lives situation. I'm all about yeah. that too. You know. Yeah. It's it's a crazy, crazy place. But uh, you know, I'm I'm glad we got the link up. Do you want to tell my listeners uh where they can find your all your stuff? Yeah, man. Um pretty easy to find. Shadowbandpodcast.com. Um I'm also on altmediaunited.com. Um I actually have another show as well, Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast um pretty much every platform you could think of but i usually try to send them to my website because i'm trying not to promote spotify and all that stuff so shadowbandpodcast.com you'll find everything and that's pretty much it you want to tell my people where to find you yeah you guys can go to my website uh, manualkingman.com it's i m m a n u e l kingman.com and there you can find all my stuff. I, I do energy work. I uh, have mentorship programs for anyone struggling with their Kundalini or, you know, with the awakening or quote unquote ascension process. You know, anyone looking for assistance in that, I, I uh, help facilitate uh, a, 
a way to be able to garner control over yourself and your thoughts. And I teach meditation. I do energy work. You know, I do clearings for people. And then I have, I've been doing three episodes a week for the last couple of months. And the, the amount that of, uh, of interviews I've lined up now, it's still, it's going to continue being that way for some period. Uh, and I just did a round table with, uh, Gary Wayne, Jim Williamson, uh, Josh Monday, Jason Monday, and Ark from Destiny Lab. And it was about fallen angels, Nephilim, secret societies, and alien abductions. And man, you guys all got to check that out. You can check out my YouTube channels, Goodness Over Darkness. Yeah, that episode you know, blew my mind <laughs> wide open. Gary Wayne is, uh, he's just on another level with his knowledge, man. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check that. I'm definitely going to check your website out too because I, I need to take the next step into my own, uh, you know, vibrational situation. You know what I mean? I got to oh, yeah, yeah. get one step further than I've been. So, and next time you're in uh, in Florida, man, give me a shout, man. Let's link up, you know, get a bite and uh, do some do something spooky. Go look at some Tartaria stuff or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're not too far from uh, a family member, but... Uh, I haven't been down all the way down to Orlando, but yeah, I would definitely, you know, that would be awesome. We could definitely uh, do something like that. Absolutely, man. Anytime. Let me know. All right. Well, I'm going to stop the recording now. Bye everybody. Thanks for having us. Uh, Thanks for listening and we will talk to you later. Peace out.